Jai 5 Jeff from Two Hacks Garage. Well, I've been doing a lot of stuff with these brakes. Uh, I didn't get them to seal, but what I did do is I went ahead and tightened up all the fittings again and applied some brake pressure to it and let it sit overnight. Um, I did notice on the driver's side that was one leaking and no longer has a drip. So I believe I have that one to seal. However, on the passenger side, it actually was dripping, but it wasn't the banjo fitting. Um, I believe it, the culprit that I'm seeing on that side is the bleeder valve. Goes in there, tighten it down, it's supposed to stop things from leaking, and then you can crack it open to bleed. Um, but it was actually pulling up around that and leaking out. It wasn't leaking out the nipple, it was going past the threads. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to use some Loctite 545. It's an anaerobic sealant. It's for pneumatic, hydraulic parts or stuff like that. Uh, I've read a lot online about it, uh, and I'm going to give it a shot. It says it works with brake fluid, so we're going to give it a shot. So what I'm going to basically do is just take a little bit of this Loctite 545, put it on these threads. It's got to make sure the brake fluid's out of the threads on there, so I've already taken care of that. And I'm going to run this in there. I'm going to let it sit for a day or two per the instructions, let it kind of cure up and apply pressure to it just to see what happens. Now, I, I will have to bleed these again, so it would have to be done again at that time. But this is just another step into trying to figure out these brakes without having to throw money at it and order parts maybe that I don't need. That being said, uh, Willwood calipers really do sound really nice right now, but I'm not going to know how well this thing is going to actually stop until I get the brakes fixed and operable. Um, I talked to Dr. Art uh, from Dr. Art Hot Rod Rehab, and we were talking about this, and we were also talking about um, this is a GM style booster and proportioning valve, and those do have a proportioning valve that needs to be reset. So I'm going to look into that. Maybe I need to reset it for more brake pressure. Um, but yeah, but I'm not going to know until I get the Loctite 45 on here, on the threads on this, in there, let it sit up for a few days or a day, and uh, go from there. So it's a waiting game, but you know what? It's preventing me to having just throw parts or uh, parts and money at it at this time, so I'm fine with that. But in the meantime, uh, my carburetor parts are gonna be in, so I'm gonna be pulling the upper intake, pulling them off of that to go through the carburetors and take care of other couple things on this car in the meantime. Um, so yeah, you're gonna be seeing that, and we're gonna be doing the same thing with Jimmy's car. Uh, Jimmy's you know, 466 cubic inch powered uh, T-bucket that used to have a supercharger on it. We actually put a tunnel ram on it. He was having some really bad ignition problems, and it came down to something very simplistic in a way, but you would have never figured it out if you wouldn't have known. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to do both carburetor setups because he's got the same setup. And, um, yeah, so, yeah, that's kind of the rest of this week. I'm going to go to Micah's tomorrow night and also this weekend. But we're going to see if just a little bit of this with a, just this piece here is able to seal that up. Let's say we find out. Be back in a couple days. Have a good one.